everyone and welcome to a new video. This is gonna be a little get ready with me while I also do a Q&A since we just hit over 11,000 of you which is so insane to me so I thought it was finally time to get to know each other a little bit and also I just wanted to say thank you so so much it means the world. I already set up a little cozy situation this morning made the bed so I thought I'd just take you through my morning routine while we chat and get to know each other a little more. Okay just to start off with the more general things. If you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Natalie. I'm 22 years old. I currently live in Amsterdam and my birthday is June 29th. What are other general quick facts? General hobbies I like to do. I really love doing sports. That's one of the things I've always done growing up. Yeah, I guess those are, I like to be creative. That's why I like to do YouTube and social media. I really like to read. Yeah, I think that's generally summing up the beginning questions. So I'm gonna check my phone now because I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me a few questions. I kind of group them into five main categories and then I have some rapid fire questions for the end. I got so many questions from you guys. First general questions that I got were where are you from? Where does your family live? Are you originally from Vienna? What languages do you speak? So this is always a little bit more of a complicated answer but I would say I'm originally from Germany but the thing is I never lived there. My parents are both born and raised Germans. Ich kann auch Deutsch sprechen. Ich bin auf Deutsch aufgewachsen. Aber ich war immer auf eine englische Schule. Anyway, I always feel like I have to say one short sentence in German to be like yes I'm German, but it's always hard because I never lived there. Growing up, I had to move around a lot because of my dad's job. So I was born in the US, so technically I also have the American passport, but other than that, I don't at all feel attached to being American since I only lived there from the age of zero to three. Then we moved to Indonesia, Jakarta, and lived there for five years. And I always went to an international school. That's why I usually feel more comfortable speaking English. And then after Indonesia, we moved to Kenya for four years. And then after Kenya, we moved to Vienna, Austria. So in Kenya, we lived in Nairobi. And then now my parents are still living in Vienna, Austria, which is why some of you might see me there if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I often go back to visit my parents, especially in the summer and for Christmas. It's also a place that I graduated, so I do kind of consider Vienna my home after moving around so much. It's also where I met Marcus in high school and my best friend Marlena. So yeah, that kind of sums up where I'm from. So I guess the short answer is I'm German. Languages, I just speak German and English. I'm gonna bring you guys to the bathroom now before I get too comfy on my bed. Okay, the next question is more related to Amsterdam. The main questions I got were, how did you end up living in Amsterdam. What are you studying? Why do you love Amsterdam? Why did you move to Amsterdam? Favorite slash least favorite part of living in Amsterdam. I moved to Amsterdam 2019 because that's when I graduated high school and I did my bachelor in psychology. Start with this oil. That lasted three years and then I did a master's which was called training and development. That was last year and now I'm doing another master's because I decided I didn't totally love the master's I did yet last year and since it was only one year I was like might as well just do another one and now I'm doing it in persuasive communication which is basically marketing and I really enjoy that. So the reason I love Amsterdam is because actually I was considering also studying in London and so I visited both places before I started studying and I immediately fell in love with Amsterdam. London honestly stressed me out and kind of scared me the thought of living there alone, I was like, oh my god, it's so big, it's really, really busy. I mean, it's also busy in Amsterdam, but what I love generally about Amsterdam is that, first of all, the culture and the lifestyle here is amazing. Just the simple fact that everyone bikes everywhere, I love that. Also, it's not too big where you feel overwhelmed, but it's also not too small where you get bored. I feel like Amsterdam has everything to offer. It's honestly the perfect student city. And also, Amsterdam is really international, which that was something that I thought was quite important considering the way I grew up was quite international. One downside is the weather, hands down. There's other downsides like of course the housing crisis that's definitely also a downside but generally living here once you do start living here the weather is crazy but you get used to it and then you really look forward to the summer so so much or any sunny day you don't take for granted then i got more specific questions related to this favorite thing about studying psych at uva what is uni like how many classes and group projects are there so favorite thing about studying psych i honestly have always known that that's what i wanted to study and i guess my favorite part in the second year you specialize and I 
specialize in clinical developmental psychology. I've always known that I wanted to work with children. Obviously now I'm doing a master's in a completely different direction, but maybe in the future I'll pick it up again. What is uni like? How many classes and group projects? I've been thinking about doing a full separate video on that later, just because I feel like there's so much to cover and so many questions about that as well. So I think if you guys are interested, let me know and I'll do a full separate video on like uni life in Amsterdam and what my experience was like and what to expect while I'm getting really red. So I think it's time to move on to the next question. <laughs> okay, my next step is hair care. So I'm gonna put in a hair mask and do a scalp treatment. Also just like adding in some oil just to really moisturize my hair because I have such dry hair and also dry skin. Okay, category three was, oh, I just spilled tea on my lovely Durf Avenue robe. Next category is all about the core people in my life. So a lot of you asked, who are the main characters in your life? Who are your best friends? Do you have a best friend? Who are the people you feel closest to? And I love this question because I have quite amazing people in my life. First of all, I mean, since I already talked about it, Oh wait, starting with the scalp mask. I live with my boyfriend, Marcus. So he's obviously a core person in my life. I'll talk about him more in the next questions because a lot of you will have asked about that and my relationship, but he's a big core part. I love living with him. I love being with him. Duh, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> next core person in my life is my best friend, Marlena. We've been best friends since I moved to Vienna. So I think almost 10 years. Like I think we always talk about it that we're about to hit 10 years. I think we did, because I think we were 12 when we met and now I'm 22. So yeah, happy anniversary to us. We literally had no friends when we moved to Vienna, honestly. My high school in Vienna, I love a few people in it now, but at the beginning, it was me and Marlena against the world. We had no friends. We have similar interests. We've both always been really into sports. We kind of met in PE class because we were in the same PE class. And then our first conversation was about the fact that we enjoy running and then we signed up to cross country as little 12 year olds and did competitions together. I don't know what I'd do without her. She's my absolute best friend. I'm so lucky to have her in my life. She lives in Vienna. She's currently studying there. Anyway, let's move on. The next core people in my life. Well, I also have a twin brother for those of you that don't know. And his name is Marco. He's also literally like my best friend. We grew up together. He's been honestly the best brother I could ever, ever wish for. He's always been there for me. People always feel weird when I say this, but he's always been smarter than me, at least in the mathy sense. So he would always sit down with me and like help me understand things and be so patient with me. And literally anytime I have an inconvenience, I'm like on the phone with him and I'm like, go. But yeah, he's the best. Then I have a younger sister, Julia. She's also definitely a core part of my life. My parents, I have the best relationship with my parents. I'm gonna move on to the mask now. Always supported me with everything. They literally made like TikTok and Instagram accounts because they wanna, yeah, support what I'm doing. And then I have my best girlfriends from high school, so obviously Marlena is in that, but then you guys might have seen like my London vlog, those girls, shout out to you, you know who you are. We're super close and we keep getting closer post high school, which I think is so special because a lot of people lose touch with people that they were friends with in high school, but for us it's been the opposite. We all have a base in Vienna, like our, most of our parents still live in Vienna, so every time for Christmas or for summer, we all get together we do a girls trip, it's the best. Then now in Amsterdam, my first ever Amsterdam best friend is Galia. You guys might have seen her in some of my vlogs or videos, especially on TikTok. We studied together. We did the whole psychology ride together. It was so hard finishing and going into a new masters and not having her there. And we've done everything together. We would study together, we'd work out together. She's just my go-to gal. And I'm so lucky to have her in Amsterdam. So that's another core person. And then of course, now. You guys might also know about this, but the Amsterdam girlies. I recently met three girls in Amsterdam this year. I've known Miriam a little longer, but Miriam, Karina, and Isabella. And we created this little group called the Amsterdam girlies. Check us out on Instagram. We are going to be hosting events. We have already hosted events and they mean the world to me as well. Okay, time for the next step. Face mask and eye patches and theme four, which is about my relationship. I got a lot of questions asking where and how did you meet? Marcus, how do you and your boyfriend see settling down in the future being from different countries? Any relationship advice? Okay, so Marcus and I met in high school in Vienna. He was a grade above me and we both signed up for an MUN trip. My school did a bunch of these little 
trips, also sports related. We would travel a lot, which was such a cool part of my high school experience. But for MUN, we were traveling to Dublin and I literally had no friends on this trip. But that's how me and Marcus met because he also didn't really have any friends. And yeah, I feel like I should also, I keep saying I'll do another video on this, but I feel like I'm gonna try and be quick with answering these questions but that's basically how we really started dating because we got to know each other a little more and then he asked me on a date after that trip and then the rest is history about the settling down question i've as you guys know never lived in germany so i don't really feel so attached to the idea that i have to live in germany i'm really flexible with wherever we end up and since marcus also kind of grew up in the same way his parents are diplomats he also grew up moving around quite a bit he's from denmark so he does at some point want to live in Copenhagen which I'm also totally fine with because I think it's a cool city but we both kind of have the same mindset of we want to live wherever the best opportunity is for both of us wherever we think we're gonna be happiest so that's more our priority regarding relationship advice we've been together for almost seven years so I feel like I can provide some advice we started dating quite young we met when I was 15 and he was 17 but one of the main things I always think about is work with each other not against each other i think a big part is also constantly trying to better yourself and improve yourself not only for your own growth but because for each other because no one really wants to be with someone who's not motivated to be a better person i think that's also a big way of how i think me and marcus have grown together because the fact that we started dating so young our values kind of as we grown up now intertwined which i think is what also keeps a relationship strong if your values are aligned and your idea of of what you want in the future are also aligned. We still prioritize us time even though we live together, but also we live our separate lives. So I go to uni for most of the days, that's where I am. Marcus works from home a lot, but he also studies in Delft, so sometimes he's there. He has his own hobbies. He has his own gym that he goes to. I have my own workout classes that I go to. He also has his own friends. Like we have some intermixed friends. Yeah, just separate lives also, because if you are glued to each other, I think that's also unhealthy. And you need to be able to know that you're also okay on your own and independent or else I think this codependency is created, which I think can get quite unhealthy. And we're all set with my face mask and eye patches. I'm gonna take you guys to make some coffee while I answer my last theme of questions. So theme number five was very much related to the future. A lot of you asked, do you see yourself staying in Amsterdam long-term? No, I don't think Amsterdam is my forever home. As much as I love Amsterdam, I think it's a perfect city for my first part of my career. Since me and Marcus have no big attack attachment to the Netherlands other than the fact that we started studying here. We'll always look back at the Netherlands and Amsterdam as best time ever, but we just don't see ourselves raising kids here. So yeah, that does make me sad thinking about that because I love living here and I'm such a nostalgic person, so it's gonna be so hard to say goodbye. Then the next sets of questions were related to what kind of job do you really want to do after uni? What are your plans when you're done with uni? Those questions are always a bit daunting because yeah, my uni career is ending now. I am finally able to say that I'm ready to move into the real world after I'm done with this master's. I would love to just work at a marketing agency and do a mix of creative things, so coming up with concepts and campaigns, but I also really like the analytical side of things. I'm currently doing a digital analytics class, which I actually really enjoy. Younger me would be shocked at me saying that. I also, of course, love doing social media, so it would be cool to continue to do this part-time. Maybe I'll try and give it a go full-time since I've saved quite a bit of money and I've been able to make quite some money, which is always Always really cool but has never been my end end goal in a way I never started social media because I was like oh I can make money from this I've just genuinely enjoyed it and I want to keep it that way so that's something I'm still figuring out for next year making some coffee now and the last set of questions related to kind of the future theme I got are where do you want to be in 10 years what is your biggest dream what's your dream life honestly I had a hard time answering this because I feel like for me it's more maybe something more simple and I don't have like one big thing that I want so so bad I love children so I definitely see myself in 10 years at least having two children hopefully I also liked 
having two siblings so maybe three children having a dog for sure i love dogs just living in a cool city and a nice apartment eating good food prioritizing my health just feeling fulfilled and purpose in whatever i'm doing one of my biggest dreams which i think would be cool my dad started his own business and that to me is really inspiring and whenever i see other people who do think similar things like that so maybe starting my own business but there'd have to be a purpose and a reason for it so i wouldn't just want to start anything yeah i guess those things but just generally feeling fulfilled and happy and content with where i am is my biggest dream i'm gonna take you guys back to the bathroom and get this off and start with some rapid fire questions i'm actually gonna try and be rapid fire because i feel like i'm such a talker so i'm gonna be doing the final step of my routine which is road first rapid fire question what was your favorite subject in high school so i did the ib in high school so probably for my ib subjects would be psychology what is your biggest achievement until now although i feel like i'm quite a goal-oriented person i don't love to quantify my achievements i guess it's hard to narrow it down to one but like i said i did sports in high school so i won quite a lot of medals in competitions that i do so i'm really proud of that especially in swimming that's probably my first main achievement i guess doing my master's so young basically completing my education at 22 is quite an achievement for me another achievement for me is making money as in something that i love and also having brand deals that i could never imagine i did a shoot with gizu last year which was just such a dream because Kizu has always been one of my favorite brands. Next question is what's your favorite childhood memory? For me it's definitely just playing with my siblings especially I have a lot of good childhood memories in Kenya because we had a huge garden and me and my siblings would just come up with the most funny and silly games like making obstacle courses, playing with our dog Snoopy. We used to have a dog, a Labrador, his name is Snoopy. He unfortunately passed away. But yeah, just being outside as a kid, like me and my siblings truly had the dream childhood. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Once again, I'm indecisive, so I couldn't stick to one. If it's sweet, I love anything like cookie dough or like brownie, just chocolatey. And if it's fruity, you guys, if you are real ones, you know it's passion fruit. They have passion fruit ice cream. I will immediately get that. I also love mango or any berry fruit flavor. Next question is, what's your favorite book? Hands down, A Little Life. I recently read that book last summer and I'm not even gonna go into it more. You guys have to read it. It's so good. Just thinking about it makes me smile, but also tear up. But close seconds are The Silent Patient. I love a good thriller. And also The Paper Palace. Do you enjoy cooking? Yes-ish. Marcus would like to say no but that's not true marcus is super into cooking because his dad loves to cook so he grew up with that and now i'm slowly getting into it what's your dream travel destination and i'm assuming that means somewhere i've never been i've been super lucky to grow up traveling a lot but one place i've never been to and would love to go is portugal i've heard so many good things about it what's your favorite vacation you've ever had this is also really hard because i honestly feel so so blessed to have grown up traveling to such cool places especially because whenever we lived for example in Indonesia we would travel to Australia or Bali or wherever it was close Singapore so I've had really cool vacations but probably at the top is the vacation I had last summer I was in Denmark so I had a cozy scanty summer then I was in different parts of Asia but mainly just Singapore and Indonesia and then with my family and other family friends we did a boat trip for a week around the Komodo Islands and that was just a dream so probably that's my favorite vacation ever that was so special we scuba dive actually I have two YouTube videos coming out from that vacation that will be coming at some point soon and then I ended that summer with a girls trip to Tselamzee which is in Austria one of my closest friends has a house there and it's just so so dreamy it's not so rapid fire i need to be more rapid fire <laughs> what's your favorite season summer hands down i'm such a summer girl my birthday's in the summer city or countryside city 100 percent. i'm such a city girl maybe in the future 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 countryside but for now i love being in a city favorite quote the first thing that pops to mind that i used to tell myself at every sports competition that i did was your body achieves what your mind believes that was something that really helped me 
me calm down especially when I was just really anxious before competition that's always been a quote running through my head when you feel the happiest for me it's being surrounded by the people I love or doing things I love whenever I'm just surrounded by people I feel comfortable with and are like my best friends or my family I feel so happy I'm always laughing doing things I love just like exercising makes me happy being creative makes me happy honestly the sun makes me so happy <laughs> just looking out at the gray sky dogs oh my god just like touching a dog will instantly make my day seeing a dog already makes my day i really want a dog i guess those are the things that make me happy what keeps you motivated the one of the biggest things that i realized that keeps me so motivated is that i'm surrounded by such motivated driven people and people who have big dreams and goals and who are successful i have close friends who are working in an industry that i think is so impressive and yeah just just being surrounded by people who who are motivated makes me motivated oh yeah but other than that i think a big part of what makes me a motivated driven person is growing up doing sports especially competitively and having to be disciplined working towards something also finding purpose in the things i do as cheesy as that sounds how are you so happy that's also a really sweet question because it means a lot but i do think i am a happy person i do get told that quite a bit but i think a big thing of how i stay happy is that i find joy and gratitude in everything especially the small things i do like a silly little thing every day where i write uh, one line per day on all my highlights that happened in that day so I guess yeah trying to actively point out all the good things in your life that's what I do how do you describe yourself in three words so the three words I thought of are driven or resilient something along those lines if I want something I will work my ass off to get there and I will not stop or give up whether it be sports related if I have a goal in mind of how fast I want to run or if I want to run a marathon or something well I'm not planning on running a marathon anytime soon but if I wanted to I would set my mind to it and get there and then the second word is positive or happy I think I generally see things with the glass half full and like I said I just try to find gratitude in things and be a good person and be happy and spread good energy because I I feel like that just comes right back at you and then the last word i thought of was adaptable just the way that i grew up since i grew up moving around a lot and internationally i think i got used to first of all being adaptable with people i get told a lot like oh you can really be friends with anyone like you're so easy to be friends with and that's the biggest compliment ever but i think just the fact that i had to always meet new people from different cultures from different backgrounds made me have to be adaptable in a way and then also just like with my environment i think you Put, you can put me in any environment and I'm pretty confident that I can usually adapt to it So yeah, I guess resilient positive or happy and adaptable I would say describe me best and the final rapid question is 2024 goals. What are your new year's goals? My goal is to keep sticking to what i've been doing especially last year and i think i've been pretty good at forming good habits and there's a lot of them that i want to keep of course i can always get better but for example for the longest time now i think since 2020 i've read at least one book a month every year so that's been a good habit and goal prioritizing my sleep is a big goal for 2024 i already kind of did that last year i'm someone who needs a lot of sleep i need at least eight hours but just really consciously also putting my phone away and also in the mornings when i wake up consciously deciding not to go on my phone I was not the best best at it last year so I'm trying to get better at that this year just continuing staying active oh running is a big goal of mine this year I used to run a lot in high school and over the past few years I've run here and there but I never stuck to it now my goal is to really really stick to it and become a runner again and feel that runners high I used to be able to run like just forever and not get tired and I want to have that feeling again because now when I run I'm like, oh my god, this is, I don't know how I used to do this. Yeah, those are generally some of my goals. Of course, I also have some social media related goals. But like I said, I don't love quantifying things. I like to more look into the actions I can take to then get to an outcome. But you cannot always control the outcome. So I don't ever really have goals like, oh, hit 20k or something like that. It's more about like, oh, post consistently every second day or something like that. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Oh, I also wrote, be a good texter. I'm the worst texter 
text her, ask any of my friends. Anyone who's ever close to me is like, if you want to reach Natalie, you need to call her. And that's so true. I'm such a caller. But I also think I need to get over the whole I'm a bad texter thing. Sometimes it's actually kind of rude that I don't respond to people for ages. And then, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I didn't respond to them. And then, yeah. So I guess I also want to be a better texter. But that's just a small little goal. I think that pretty much sums up this Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope you got to know me a little bit better. I love doing things like this. I cannot wait to see, especially where YouTube goes. I enjoy long form content so, so much. And it means, again, so much to me that there's more than 11,000 of you. That's so crazy. So thank you so, so much. I will see you guys in my next video. Yeah. Bye. Bye.